And so interacting with nurse. Um, nurse has a team of consultants as well as our user engagement group that actively work together to help resolve your questions and answer any issues or just get you in touch with the right person or the right resource to help you. So there are different ways in which you you can interact with us. Uh, and hopefully it'll be a proactive interaction, meaning we, we don't want you to uh, have time wasted in which you're not achieving your science goal goals. So our consulting account support team is here to help you. Um, if you have any questions, um, please do, do make sure that you reach out for assistance and no question or problem is too small. Um, I think that that is always a, a detriment to our progress if we don't, aren't able to reach out for help and assistance. And so some things to consider with um, our consulting team and if you submit a consulting ticket is you can expect a response within four business hours. So if you submit a, a ticket the at the at night, the next um, morning Pacific time, you will get a response within four business hours. And we will do our best to help resolve your problem internally, as well as reaching with our vendor support to resolve them um, as well. Uh, the most the, the easiest way and the for you to get assistance is by submitting a, a help a consulting service desk ticket to us for assistance with problems. And so if you don't have know how to submit a uh, ticket or what to ask, which is a very common problem, we have a number of tips for filing a ticket. Um, for you. And you just want to make sure that you are specific and very detailed with your problem. You know, if there is a error or, you know, what caused the error, is it specific library or software packages that are using? Providing as much detail and information about your problem uh, in order for us to replicate it is the easiest way for us to help resolve your issues. Um, as far as reaching for help outside of a ticket, we also have office hours that are available. Um, commonly, we will have various um, announcements for different office hours that we have, but we're also able to schedule specific appointments with you where you can work with an expert um, for a specific problem that you might have. And you can easily just schedule an appointment and submit a request by, by going to this URL and it is a URL, it's nurse.as.me, that you can book an appointment with an appropriate uh, consultant. And again, we also have various training events that occur to help you, uh, whether it's if you're learning how to uh, program uh, in CUDA, or if you want to learn how to use uh, Julia or another language. We have various trainings that occur uh, every month, year round, um, some virtual and some um, hybrid and in person as well. So please be sure to look out for those. And you can find all those notices and trainings in our weekly email as well. Uh, nurse operates 24 seven, 365 days out of the year. Um, so we strive in being able to keep our systems operational. You want to make sure that you check on any type of uh, outages or maintenance with our nurse message of the day. And it is just nurse.gov uh, forward slash uh, MOTD. Now, reaching the end of this, you want to keep in mind that you have your account and then you also have your uh, allocation or project. So you want to keep in mind you understand your account being your username and the project is the time that you use and that you're being charged for. That's managed by your principal investigator. So as you get started on Perlmuter, uh, please make sure you're using your time uh, wisely and you don't want to uh, deplete uh, your project's allocation. And so 
all of our acceptable policies and whatnot are available on IRIS and through our acceptable use policy form. Um, these include our password policies and whatnot as well for you to use. And we will assume that everyone is able to connect and go through uh, MFA for this juncture. So that will give us to the end of our part one of our hour on running jobs. <clears throat> so at this point, do we have any uh, questions about that getting started material uh, from anyone? No? Okay. All right. Good. Well, we will continue on then into uh, working on Perlmuter and running jobs. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to enter it in the chat. Uh, Lippy, was there any, Lippy or Helen, were there any questions to call out? There's no question so far. Oh. All right. All right, so we will continue on with our next half of this call, and it is focusing on um, running jobs on Perlmuter and understanding the architecture. And so for this second half of our call, what you're going to gain from uh, this call, from this uh, half of the call is an understanding of Perlmuter system overview or software and programming environment, uh, running jobs on Perlmuter, um, understanding different slurm commands, as well as best practices for job submissions on Perlmuter. And so let's talk about um, our system and what exactly does it entail in detail. And so Perlmuter debuted at uh, number eight on the top 500 list. I believe it's about number 13 currently. And it is debuted as a state-of-the-art system. We have over almost 1,800 GPU accelerated nodes. And those consist of the um, NVIDIA A100 GPUs, as well as a AMD uh, Milan CPU processor. So that is on the GPU enriched uh, partition of Perlmuter. Um, as far as the, the memory and CPU requirements, we have 448 terabytes for CPU and 320 terabytes for the GPU memory requirements on those nodes. We have over uh, 3,070 CPU only nodes available as well. Um, each of those nodes consists of two of the AMD uh, Milan CPUs. Um, as well as over 1,500 terabytes of CPU memory. And at NURSE, we have a, a ecosystem that is interconnected for different resources that not only includes our network connection, um, our large-scale storage, our CFS system, Scratch, um, connection to other services and gateways that we can use and leverage for um, access as well, as well as access to um, other resources within the DOE through our um, experimental facilities and other um, connections that are available. And so a simplified overview of our nurse file system is that, you know, at the top, we have our memory that is available for you to utilize on the node, and then we have our local file system that is available for you to use for Scratch. And then we have our global file system as well as our large scale tape archives. And then you want to consider that we have our global common, which is going to be what is shared amongst users, as well as our global home, which will contain your individual um, directories as well. Uh, this is just meant to give you a high level overview of um, our file system and uh, um, IO and data. We have more advanced um, trainings and talks on that, and we will have uh, links to those videos as well for more details on that.
And so with our Perlmuter file system, we have our global home that is available to you. Then we have our CFS, our global community file system. And then we also have Scratch. And so you want to keep in mind some of the differences in how you want to use some of the different file systems. Um, with your global home, you know, this is meant for small storage and more um, permanent things that you want to utilize. Um, so basically, it's good for scripts and, you know, source code and quick things that you can run, but not good for large uh, permanent um, things that you, you need to store. So for permanent larger storage, you can use CFS. Um, that can be for um, sharing data within your project or group. And then you also have the temporary large scratch that can be used. And scratch is, is not meant to be storage, but it's optimized for reading and writing of data. So it's not backed up and scratch is purged every eight weeks um, as well. So those are kind of different considerations that you have to be aware of and keep in mind as you um, as you start working on Perlmuter. And if you if you have a question or you not you're not sure of what is the best way, please uh, just uh, submit a ticket or schedule an appointment or you can just email and ask us. Um, the idea is just making sure that you, if you are confused, you ask us for help and assistance. Uh, we also have our long-term storage, um, HPSS available. Um, that can be used for hierarchical storage of archival data. Um, so we have a number of different uh, storage mechanisms that are in place for all of our users to make use of. And so our ecosystem is rich in various resources and tools um, for data analytics. We have Julia R. Um, Jupyter data management, we have MongoDB, et cetera. Um, and then we also have a big push towards accelerating um, scientific discovery through workflows as, as well as using containers. So these are a couple of different uh, components within our ecosystem that are available for you. If you focus on a specific area, um, please submit a and you're, you're confused about how the best way to, to use that on Perlmuter, that's what we're here for. Uh, please submit a ticket or also schedule an appointment, and we can connect you with the experts in those areas to assist you. And so no scientific application is the same, and therefore they all require different compilers. And fortunately at NURSE, we offer a number of different compiler options, um, both open source as well as vendor specific that are available, um, depending on the type of application that you have to use from um, whether it's Fortran or C or CUDA, et cetera. This uh, table simply shows you uh, what we have and whether it is vendor supported or is supported by NURSE. So we have a, a number of different options available for any of our users. Okay, so now that we've gone through a, a simple overview of our nurse and Perlmuter system, let's talk about um, how do you submit jobs. And if you're new to HPC, you, you might not even really understand the lingo. And so let's kind of um, calibrate our expectations with terminology. So first of all, what is a job and how do I get one? Well, it's not that type of job. Um, when we say a job, we're talking about submitting a, uh, a computational run on our system. So whenever you connect to Perlmuter, you're connecting on a login node. So this basically includes if you if you SSH or if you access us through our Jupyter Hub as well. Um, and so a thing to keep in mind with these login nodes is that they are not meant for large computing tasks. They are just you know meant to be shared 
amongst our users. They're used. Um, we have 40 login nodes. And so it's really quick for you to debug or compile something really quick. We have over 4,864 compute nodes available for you outside of those login nodes. And so we have different ways in which you can access a compute node. You can do this through a uh, interactive job that will enable you to connect directly to a compute node. And then you can go through it in a command line fashion. Or you can, you can also have a, a Jupyter notebook on a commute node that you can execute in. And then you can also do a batch job submissions. So with a batch submission, you're able to um, create write your script. Um, you can submit it to a queue and you can schedule it to run um, based off of the priority that you need as well as the time that you need for it to, to execute. And so when you go to submit a job on Perlmuter, you, we use a, a, a submission manager called Slurm. And Slurm basically manages um, our workload on Perlmuter. So it's a scheduling tool that uses to that we use to prioritize when jobs submitted by our users will execute. Um, so some things that you want to consider when you do submit a job on Perlmuter is that you want to be specific in the, the type of resources that you need to use, um, meaning the number of nodes, as well as whether you mean CPU only or um, GPU as well. Um, and what it does is it executes and monitors those jobs as well as manages that priority. So Slurm is used um, primarily across a lot of different HPC systems, and it's configured differently according to that system. So if you've used Slurm on another system, it might be a little bit different um, using it on Perlmuter here at Nurse. So those are things that you want to keep into consideration. And we do have um, all of those aspects outlined in our documentation as well. And so we talked about two ways in which you can submit a job on Slurm. Um, uh, you can do that using an interactive job submission, and that is going to be used using um, a command called salloc, and basically it's short for a Slurm allocation. And this can be used to allocate a node or a set of nodes um, on our system. So when you log into our login uh, shell, you're already on that allocation. So if you want to specifically allocate a node, you can do so with the salloc command. Um, and this shows how I have been able to do it. And what we'll do is we can go through and break down what all of these different flag options mean if you are new to using Slurm. And so we submitted our job to Slurm. Now what did that job entail? What do, do, do we want for Slurm to do? And so with the salloc command, we have a couple of different flags. This is not an exhaustive list. This is just a, a simple, and easy, simple and easy way to, for you to understand um, the parameters that you can pass in for um, running a interactive job. And so we have um, the dash A option. And so that is going to denote your basically your type of account that you are going to be using. Um, and so typically that's going to start with the M and it's going to denote your your project file that you're that you're your project that you're on. Um, you want to pass in the number of nodes. And so with this we have N dash N one or you could have did dash dash nodes equals one. And that's just saying um, one compute node. And then our T flag is for time. Again, you could have did dash dash time as well. And then we have our constraint, which is the type of system, which we can say CPU or GPU. And so in this essence, we requested a GPU enabled node. So this is um, a quick and easy way of how we're able to submit a interactive um, job on using Slurm with the salloc command. Do we have any questions about 
that, um, what is SLRM, how it's used, and how to submit an interactive job. I just mentioned in the chat that um, basically the, Charles is just wanting to show what these commands look like and give an overview. But if you are, um, you know, trying to write all this down, don't worry about it. You'll get the slides. It's just Charles wants to show you kind of what to expect once you get into Slurm or once you start submitting jobs. Um, so take this time to just listen to whatever Charles is saying and and while he's going through it, and then you can, you'll see the slides. And of course you have access to our documentation 24 seven. Um, and that that's when you can really get into the nitty gritty of it. So, so don't, don't stress out if it's, if, it, if it's feeling fast, it's really meant to be just like a, a quick little uh, teaser. <laughs> Right. And, you know, we we will also be sending out all of the presentation slides as well as some um, practice scripts and other supplemental materials. Um, if this is new to you, don't get overwhelmed. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice and repetitiveness and going through and practicing things before it finally sinks in. So thank, thanks, Slippy, for that. Okay, and so when do you use an interactive job? So interactive jobs are best for simple testing and debugging of code. You can also use it for profiling. Um, if you want to do a interactive queue or set that type of limit, you can do the flag queue and then interact dash Q and then interactive or QoS is interactive. And then you can also specify if you want it to be shared so you can among shared nodes as well. Um, so there are different ways in which you could uh, interactively launch your jobs. And so you wanna keep in mind that you have a, a half node max and a four hour max wall time for those interactive um, job submissions, which are when they're shared. So if you, are not going to be able to do your science within those constraints for the nodes in the four hours, then we have another option for you, uh, which is what a lot of our science involves, and that is batch submissions. And so a batch submission is basically you submitting a large scale job into our queue and Slurm will schedule it based off of priority. This allows for you to give more time for any simulations that you need to do, as well as schedule across more compute nodes. And you know, sometimes we will have users that need to use 80% or more of our nodes for their simulations. So it is a, a big process. And the easiest way to do that is for you to do your Slurm batch submission for scheduling. And so how do you submit a batch job? So in Slurm, the command for a batch job submission is very simple. It's sbatch, and then you are going to pass a, a script that you will be, that you will have executing your Slurm script for executing your job. And so once you submit it using sbatch and then the name of your script, Slurm is going to give you a job ID which basically lets you know that your job has been submitted. And so what exactly does a Slurm uh, script look like? Um, it has a, a lot of the same options as we had in our salloc command, but we start with the, the sbatch hash, hashtag in the comment so that we know, um, so that Slurm knows how to read those options appropriately. And so in this case, we have a number of our same, um, same flags that we use for submitting a batch script. And then we can also have specific things such as we can label the job name if we want it to be uh, more specific. We can have, we can organize it based off of the outputs as well. Um, so a number of different options. And in order to execute it within Slurm, you would use the or within, within the script, you would use the srun command with the number of nodes that you want to use. Um, we'll go into more detail about that, though. 
So this is the difference between doing an interactive job versus a, a batch job submission. And so you want to keep in mind that Slurm will add environment variables. So what you can do is you can use the Slurm in nodes to, as, to add the number of nodes that you want to request, as well as with the srun command, you can use that for executing it as well. And if you have a host name um, of specific nodes that you want to use, you can do it that way as well. Can I ask the room a question? Go for it. I'm curious to know, Have um, has anyone done use Slurm before or another scheduler? I know we have a couple of people who are, who have some HPC experience, but maybe even if you have said that you don't have HPC experience, sometimes if you're using a cluster at like university, they may still um, use something like this. So have people seen this before? Um, just say yes or no in the chat or raise your hand. Or even if you, I know um, on some of the IBM systems that I use, it was AIX, but Slurm seems like it has migrated to be a, a top choice. Good. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing quite a few yeses. If the answer is no, that's okay. But it looks like actually a lot of people have used this. So that's really great because um, hopefully it's similar. Um, the, the one thing to remember is that there might be different policies that we have, meaning like, for example, at, at NERSC, when you, if you, let's say you submit a hundred jobs at any given time, only two of those will be eligible at a time. So this is to keep people from submitting like a thousand jobs. And then like all of their thousand jobs are going to run before the next person's thousand jobs. Um, so that might be a policy difference that is different between our institution and other institutions. Um, but if you've used Slurm before, um, in the, the usage of it could be pretty similar. Um, and so what might be helpful is later after this to go through the documentation and, and try to find like what are some of the differences or see how it kind of compares to what you've done before. And if you haven't ever used this before, um, Actually, a decent number of our tickets are people asking for help with their their Slurm scripts. Like, you know, this isn't working or um, I tried this and it seems to be running poorly. Um, so it's very common for people to just copy paste their Slurm um, batch submission or even the command they're using if they're doing salloc into a ticket and just say, hey, something isn't working. Um, you know, sometimes we forget what the flag is called, um, things like that, you know. So if 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 you haven't done this before, um, this is actually really common for people to ask us about. And if you have done it before, it might be similar to what you've done in the past. Um, so yeah, thanks, Charles. I just wanted to add that. No, that is a very good point. Um, a lot of times, a lot of it carries over from if you're if you've used another even if you haven't used Slurm, um, if you've not used another package manager, um, it can carry over. It's still kind of the same basic um, basic concept. So good, great point, Slippy. Awesome. Okay, and so some other useful um, environmental variables that you want to keep in mind is you want to understand like the the number of nodes that you'll you'll need to new, to use on your job as well as the number of tasks per node that you'll be using, um, how many CPUs on the node, as well as the, the GPUs on the node. Um, for a quorum in the room, do we have uh, any understanding of users that will be doing large scale simulations, meaning let's say more than 20 nodes versus those that maybe think that they will be doing um, more, maybe uh, uh, machine learning uh, models on smaller number of nodes, but on more GPUs. Do we have a, does anyone care to share what they envision their use of Perlmutter would look like versus large scale nodes or maybe just smaller testing and debugging or ML training? So Teak says, uh, 
we have one user that says mini GPUs on few nodes. Okay, interesting. Looking at quantum circuit simulations. Yeah, and each of our GPU nodes, or the, what we call GPU nodes, are one CPU and four GPUs. Um, so it might be possible that, um, you know, you sometimes you only need one or two GPUs, sometimes you need a bunch. Um, that, that could vary. Um, so you, you could be running across 40 nodes and using all the GPUs, or you could be running on one and using four GPUs. Yeah, good point. All right. And so uh, Lippy mentioned earlier about our policy um, differences that might happen if you view Slurm somewhere else. And another um, thing that that speaks to is the, the different queues that we have and some of those different limits. Um, so if you're going to use a, uh, the, the queue option specifies the type of queue. And if you're going to use something like a, a debug queue, um, where you specify that QoS to be, then you have specific limitations of, you can use one to eight nodes and you have a, a max wall time of 30 minutes. Um, and that can be used if you want to test before expanding to large scale jobs. Um, if you use a regular or shared um, queue, then you wanna make sure that you keep in mind um, you have a 24 hour max time and 5,000 max job submission. So you can do a, a regular or shared. If you do a shared, then you have um, half of those um, constraints for that node maximum per job. So a couple of different options to take into account for if you're going to be doing a, a batch submission. And so you can also enter appropriate commands to, to debug your script. You can do within, within um, the sbatch command, you can use, um, you can debug it with that flag as well and specify the that time that you want to use. You can do scale testing to test the scalability of your job as well um, based off of the number of nodes that you want to use too. So there are different ways in which you can test. And we also have more advanced trainings on profiling and debugging um, your applications and identifying bottlenecks like memory issues as well. Okay, so how can you see if your jobs are working? Um, so within Slurm, you would use the the SQ command, and that's basically the Slurm queue. And basically it's gonna view um, the information about the jobs in the Slurm queue for you. And so it can, with Perlmutter, it can return a lot. Um, another way for you to do that is to use SQS as well. And so for here example, uh, this just shows a couple of jobs from this morning for me that I normally run. So there are different ways that you can see um, some of the different jobs that you're that you you might uh, be running and check on their progress as well. And if you need to cancel a job, you can just do the s cancel command with that job ID to cancel it as well. Additional information about um, accounting data for all jobs in. Um, within uh, the Slurm database can also be found. Um, so if we enter just S account, this will uh, an example of what it might output for you to show um, some of the different uh, jobs that have executed. Typically, I think it's uh, within the past, yeah, the past 24 hours or a day. And then there are other specific ways you can look at but more specific information. So for example, if you know the job ID, you can specifically look that up and get more details about the specific jobs um, associated with it that have um, executed. Uh, so that could be the actual batch submission versus the, the application actually executing as well. And then you can also do it based off of names for the jobs and other constraints that you've used as well. So these are just a, a few of the different 
uh, command options that are available for you to use. And so we will not get to the jobs in containers. We have about five minutes remaining and I wanted to make sure we had time for questions and also uh, for everyone to, if you could please complete the survey and provide examples of the types of jobs that you would like to see um, how to use and execute. Because with our interactive notebook, we plan to include at least the top five of different types of jobs um, that you have submitted. And that will be emailed out um, at the end of this week on Friday uh, with the video announcement and other materials that are posted. Uh, but at this moment, with the last four minutes remaining, do we have um, any specific questions from anyone? You're more than welcome. Thank you for attending. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, Deepa is asking, would like to know more about ANSYS job submission. Um, actually, that's a good question. I don't know anything specific about that application. Let's see. Okay, we don't seem to but have it. If you could also make sure you enter that into um, the survey link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change the link as to the view form, but otherwise you'll be editing the original form, the link original. Oh, okay. Um, to answer your question, though, I, I don't see anything in our documentation about that application. Um, so it must not be one that we regularly support. That doesn't mean you can't use it. Um, it means you probably have to install it yourself. Um, so have you installed it and you are having problems with the job submission? Um, or are you kind of asking more broadly? Because some some of our, some um, applications that are used by a lot of people on our system across many projects, we have installed and we support, but um, there's a lot of codes and simulations and stuff that we don't provide. Um, like out of the box, ready for you to use. Um, so this. Uh, um, uh, so hi, yes. Yeah. So actually, currently, ANSYS CFS is not installed on NERSC. So I have been asked to uh, contact to my PPPL team to get installed mm -hmm. on uh, NERSC. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to just know more about like. Uh, actually, currently, I'm using Stellar at PPPL to submit my jobs on HPC. Like uh, I know a little bit more, a little bit about uh, how to submit jobs on Stellar via batch file. So I just want to, I, I am curious to know how to submit jobs on NERSC, uh, whether it would be the same process or do I need to do some different script, uh, scripting or, uh, I mean, how it would be different. Well, um, um, I'm not I'm not familiar with the that the other scheduler that you mentioned, um, and and different systems can be a little bit different. But if yes. you're if you have your batch submission script, um, you can go and compare it. Go to the documentation on on Slurm, like the Slurm documentation or ours, which is docs.nurse.gov, um, and you can just sort of do like a one to one comparison if you can just translate it right. Oh. Um, so you might yeah. be able and I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to show this slide, um, Deepa, maybe it would help you. We do have a script generator that you can use. Um, okay. for, if your application is, do you have your application ported to Perlmutter already, or do you have uh, it? Is it, on, it installed? Is it installed on Perlmutter uh, already? Uh, no, actually, uh, we are in the process. Okay. Okay. Yes, it would be installed in a, in in this week or maybe next week, couple of weeks. Yeah, it would okay. be. Yeah. So once you so, once you have it set up and installed, and you know, um, we you, you can use the script generator um to generate 
you know um, using the same uh, executable that you would have used on your other scheduler, you would just mm -hmm. enter and you can use this script generator and it'll generate all of the um, flags that you would need or at a minimum. Uh, okay, so, okay. Okay, and thank some, you. Some of the commands will be a little different. Like for example, I don't know, like uh, some of the other systems, you, instead of S run, they use MPI run um, to, mm -hmm. to thing, but we, we use S run. So you would want to just, it's basically translation. You're just gonna chain, take, take whatever you have and translate it into the slurm command, which is usually something S and then a word. Um, so you might find that you don't have to really do too much. You just need to okay. do that kind of one-to-one -one translation. Yes, thank you. Actually, I didn't know about this script yet. Thank you for saying Thank you. No, thank you for your question. That's, that's what we're here for. So thank you. Did we have any other um, questions or any feedback? Um, please, uh, if you have not completed the, if you please complete the survey uh, before you uh, log off um, and, you know, let us know any questions that you have uh, and, or any, um, yeah, any questions that you have or you would need any assistance on. But other than that, we are at the top of the hour, and I want to thank you all for attending um, the Getting Started at on Perlmuter Community Call. And again, we want to welcome all of you to NURSE, and please feel free to reach out to myself, Lippy, uh, Helen, Rebecca, any of NURSE Consulting for any questions or problems that you might have, and we want to welcome you. Stop the recording. I've seen two responses. So, complimenting solid uh, presentation. Oh, awesome. Great. Awesome. Thank you both. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, that was a good set.